Well, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Uh, it's been a few weeks uh, since I've done an Arctic uh, report. I did a, a good few weeks ago and I asked some questions about uh, whether the ice is really melting, uh, sorry, uh, is, is really refreezing. And I showed the data from uh, November last year, which uh, showed, I think, fairly conclusively that it didn't. But of course, we always had the uh, the same old skeptics who say that uh, the uh, the melt season ends on a particular date, so it couldn't possibly uh, be true. Everything is uh, you don't believe anything that uh, is there in front of your eyes. Uh, you just believe what the uh, what the experts tell you. Well, I refuse to tell you that. I've got eyes to see, and I can work with the uh, data, and I can tell you that a month after the uh, the end of the uh, the melt season, when the um, the sun has set over the uh, the North Pole, and indeed over uh, parts of northern Greenland. Um, that we still see the same pattern by and large that we did um, even a couple of months ago. Uh, so I just want to uh, quickly take you through that now. This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I just want to do something on the Arctic, but I want to start off with this. Because uh, last week I posted a video and stuff on my blog on what I regard as being the most important story uh, for the whole of humanity, and it was this. It was uh, Russian scientists find most powerful ever methane uh, seep in the ocean layer. Uh, they've discovered the most powerful methane gas fountain ever recorded, highlighting the danger of this greenhouse gas accelerating climate change or causing an oil or gas spill as it erupts from the thawing uh, permafrost. Um, the concentration of methane uh, from one of these areas where the water was boiling over an area of 50 square feet was up to 16 parts per million, more than nine times higher than the atmospheric average. So what was interesting about this was who uh, published this information and who didn't. So I got it first from uh, Moscow News, which is an English language publication in Moscow, and then it appeared in Newsweek, and then it appeared in The Telegraph. So uh, a couple of days later I went onto Facebook and people were starting to uh, post this. And I didn't pay that much attention. I almost I went to re repost it, but the um, the date for this is 13th of December, uh, 2011. Uh, so that's eight years ago, and of course it's pointing to this very problem. I didn't notice that they were talking about a different ship, and the various details uh, were different, but they seem to be describing ostensibly the same phenomenon, um, or not ostensibly, actually uh, the same phenomenon. Um, but what was interesting, what really struck me was that this is the most important climate information that I could ever imagine, and it was totally missing from uh, the normal suspects uh, in the mainstream media it was missing not a word from the BBC not a word from the Guardian and I thought uh, oh good the independence covered it but of course I didn't look at the uh, the date stamp so that says a whole lot about what it was possible to say then and what it is not possible to say now the fact that um, the, the independent wrote a very good and informative article in 2011 about methane plumes and their absolute silence um, in 2019. 
and I can almost tell you kind of why why they're willing to talk about uh, Greenland you know the, the the ice sheets melting far earlier um, but they're not willing to talk about the sea ice because the sea ice produces uh, rapid changes uh, no matter how quickly the uh, the glaciers of Greenland are melting they still fall within the um, the narrative of kind of let's get our greenhouse gases down um, and we'll all drive electric cars, we'll all save the economy and western civilization and we'll use uh, climate change to to put through our agenda. Whereas if the Arctic is melting and you've got methane coming up uh, then you can't pretend any longer. Uh, things are looking really bad. We're living in the uh, the realm of the age of consequences. So there's a big difference as to why they can talk about one and why they can't talk about another. And you'd have to do quite a lot of uh, provide quite a lot of evidence to provide to persuade me otherwise. I just want to go through a few of these uh, graphs. That this one comes from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And uh, I don't know if you recall, uh, and this is why I was going on about fraud, uh, because when we knew that the ice was in an absolute dire state um, and very, very thin and continues to be so, then we saw that actually the 2012 uh, extent showed itself as greater and they've They've reinforced this uh, by showing now um, kind of that it's relatively speaking going down. So let, let's just uh, have a look. Some of these other stuff is from uh, Zach Laid. So this shows it far, far more clearly. He says slow expansion of Arctic sea ice so far this freeze season. Its total extent is nearly uh, two and a half uh, million square kilometers below the 1981 to 2010 average, which is really uh, uh, the most important thing. And he, he he's got a couple of other interesting graphs. So there's this. This is the Arctic sea ice extent refreeze, and everyone's sort of saying, "Well, ah, uh, the melt season's over, and now it's all refreezing again." Well, is it? I mean, you know, compared with 22%, 9%, I rest my case. And you just need to look at everything else that I um, uh, am reporting. Uh, so this also uh, shows kind of the greatest uh, uh, Arctic sea ice uh, extent trends. Losses of Arctic sea ice are occurring all months of the year and we know that. I've been looking at that and, and chronicling it uh, and I haven't had access to all of these um, these graphs but I could have told you that one. And here goes another one. Um, unsurprisingly Arctic sea ice extent is a record low again for the date so uh, yeah, we just went through this a couple of months, August and September, where we retreated away from the lows seemingly, um, but didn't really. Um, and now we're back again. And uh, here he says, average Arctic sea ice thickness was statistically tied for the thinnest, thinnest ice on record by the end of September. So uh, there we are. We're well into the so-called refreeze. Um, we're almost to the middle of October. Um, the thaw is well and truly over. But let's just have a look at what is really happening. So this is uh, from the Navy 
uh, US Navy website and it shows a GIF showing the uh, the sea ice thickness in the um, in the last 30 days so you can see <laughs> that there's not a lot of ice coming back uh, in fact it looks to me uh, pretty much as it did last time I looked weeks and weeks ago uh, and of course I just got trolls on uh, YouTube telling me uh, that the uh, that the that the melt season uh, ends on a particular date and then everything starts refreezing well I can only see limited signs of that and let's just go this is how it looks uh, today uh, so you're starting to see little bits of um, ice coming back but look at all of this look at the open water huge amounts of open water and so is it any surprise that we've gone back to uh, kind of record uh, low sea ice um, extent uh, the local the latest data from Zach Lab shows that so let's just go on so this is how it looks you see uh, I mean the, the sun has gone down in the whole of northern Greenland all of this wide area uh, is 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 dark um, and we've got all of this green here uh, this is uh, algae algal bloom I presume we saw the same in last year and in previous years and if the weather was uh, clear which is which it's not I went back about a week uh, so we've got a lot of cloud around here but I'm sure that is going to show you um, that this all of this around here uh, is still open water so this looks um, this looks at extent as well as concentration uh, so that you can see the areas of extremely low concentration have gone and uh, you know we're getting what looks like sort of normal ice there and nothing has really changed uh, this is your sea surface temperature anomalies and all the water around the ice uh, is quite anomalous continues to be anomalously warm by a few couple of degrees and look at this this is the um, the air temperature uh, anomaly uh, as of today um, so uh, hugely hugely warm uh, compared with uh, what it should be with the average just about everywhere uh, in the Arctic and then we go to sea ice concentration and this uh, shows that the concentration is increasing uh, but it's nowhere near 100% uh, yet so that's that's just a few things and let's just go on and look at some other areas and see what the data a is telling you of the uh, news that came out last week from Omsk University and from uh, uh, Igor Semelyatov uh, about record uh, amounts of methane being let off in the northeast, sorry, eastern Siberia, and in particular they've identified uh, Bennett Island, uh, which is this island here. Uh, and they measured amounts of Euro, uh, methane that were seven to nine times the local average. So that raises the whole question of why when we look at CAMS, when we look at kind of all the data in fact, we see high, high amounts of methane coming up everywhere, 
from Scandinavia, from around Norway, Zimbabwe, to China, to India, everywhere in the world, except for the Eastern Siberia. Uh, and of course, I mean, these are still high, high levels. They're up to 1900 parts per billion. Uh, but they still don't um, kind of meet what one would expect uh, from the data that's being released. And then the other thing is the uh, the temperatures. So we we were talking about the temperatures, and I pulled them up here, and uh, of course they're definitely warm enough to uh, to warm things up sufficiently so that they release. Uh, methane clathrates. So, I mean, here goes 3.2 degrees Celsius. Um, yeah, 3 degrees, 1.4, 1.7, 2.9. Uh, so those are pretty high temperatures. So that explains uh, how it is possible. What it doesn't explain is why the, uh, the satellite data does not show anything out of the ordinary. 